Hi everyone, it's Maxine here from Northumberland Zoo and uh, ready to give you an update of what we've been up to over the last week. Just heading out to our hay field. Um, this is just a big empty blank field that uh, is kind of next to the car park um, where we produce all of our own food for the animals. So my dad has got all of his like little antique bits of tractor equipment <laughs> that he likes to use. So he mows the grass, he dries it with his own little hay spinning thingy bob uh, and he also bales it with this little baler. Um, so I thought I would show you a bit of that. We obviously try and be as self-sufficient as possible um, so that we don't have to buy as much stuff in and obviously it's more sustainable anyway so you know less transport costs whatnot um, so yeah we're just gonna go up and uh, see them I've got some really cool drone shots of the kind of beginning parts of the process from cutting um, to drying the hay but I tried to get some drone shots today of them actually baling and unfortunately the drone got blown away ended in the llama field so that was a bit nerve-wracking but it's fine everyone's fine llamas are fine drones fine um, so yeah just thought I would grab the GoPro and head up here and show you my dad So that uh, the hay machine is pretty cool. What it does is it basically scoops up the row of grass and kind of rolls it up, rolls it up, rolls it up into a lovely bale. And then to finish it off, it wraps it with some baling twine. Uh, so it makes it nice and tight and secure. It keeps the air out of them. Obviously the, uh, the weather has been uh, unusually lush uh, recently and uh, with it being so dry and so uh, sunny the grass was just perfect for cutting. So there's not as much grass as what we would normally have but we would rather take the risk, cut it now, get all these bales of hay in um, to make sure that we've actually got food for the animals. So uh, the hay obviously gets fed out to the horses, Shetland ponies, the cow, the llamas, uh, the deer, capybara, uh, wallabies. So, you know, it goes to really good use and it saves us buying it in. So, you know, the fact that we can do it ourselves is a massive bonus. And obviously my dad's super happy that he gets to uh, mess about with his tractor. So this is what basically these two things spin round independently. And what they do is they f pick up the grass off of the field and they spin it around and dry it out. So. My dad made several trips around the field using this to try and whiz the grass round, dry it out so that it's ready for baling.
So as usual, we've been pretty busy this week. Um, just getting random extra jobs done. My mum's been concentrating on getting these tables ready. Um, obviously, they're not going to be used for the longest time, it seems. Um, we are looking at a reopening date of uh, early July. Um, so we'll announce a proper date set in stone soon, uh, depending that everything goes okay. Um, we've got quite a few things to put in place, as you can imagine. It's for your safety, it's for our safety. Uh, and we've got to work on a, a one-way system around the zoo as well. So. Yeah, there's quite a bit to do, um, but we'll get there, you know, and there's a quite a lot of zoos um, that are <laughs> in the exact same boat. Unfortunately, none of the indoor areas are going to be open, and that's for obvious reasons. So um, hopefully we'll get more news on when we can open them soon. So my dad's been busy building the new toilet. That used to be the uh, that used to be the tea room on the right hand side, but now it's a full ladies and gents, complete with disabled access and everything. So that looks pretty smart. He's quite pleased with that. The grass has regrown, lovely. It's not being stampeded on, so uh, that's all looking pretty smart. Again, it's been another absolutely gorgeous week, weather-wise, like, you <laughs> can't complain. It's a little bit windy earlier on in the week, and the wind does cause us a few issues um, in the fact that um, we can't let certain animals out, and that's due to the risk of wind damage. So, say for example, if the if the wind gust speed is over 40 miles an hour, which I think it was like 45 early run in the week, there's a massive risk of uh, trees collapsing on certain enclosures and bringing the perimeter fences down, which means that basically the animals can escape. So obviously the Canadian lynx, lemurs, uh, raccoons, they all get locked in when it's really, really windy. Um, and it's just for their own safety, really. So they were quite excited to get let back out again. African greys enjoying the sun. These are meerkats, enjoying the sun as well. Hey kids, how's it going? It's a bit warm, isn't it? Hmm. It's a little bit warm. Oh, dearie me, look at you. Even the animals that are built for this kind of weather, I mean, these guys are from uh, the Kalahari Desert in Southern Africa, even they're just like, yeah, it's, it's too warm for this. So uh, they're uh, passed out in the, in the shade, which is pretty cool. Um, we've had another couple of like massive <laughs> donations from Morrison's. It's been absolutely unbelievable. Morrison's in Berwick. Um, they keep sending down a truck like three times a week full of crates of fruit and veg, which is just unbelievable. I mean, it all massively helps us out. Um, so yeah, can't thank you guys enough. Um, you guys are all gonna have to come down here and see the zoo when we reopen. Uh, you're more than welcome because we really, really appreciate it. Apparently it's the person who's luckiest who gets to do the run down to the zoo with all the crates of food. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. No, <laughs> don't. <laughs> Stop it. That's how badly mum doesn't want to be filmed. <laughs> Just look, I want to go that way. Where's your uniform? No, don't. <laughs> your mum, she's such a torment. Um, again, it's too hot for the otters, so they're just not out. Which is fair enough. Oh, we made some modifications to our Polaris, which is the really, really handy piece of equipment we drive around the zoo with. See what you think. Hiya. Hi, what are you doing? Uh, well, we've got loads of fruit deliveries. Um, so we've frozen loads of our fruit so animals can have it for like smoothies or in ice block. So we've got like six kilos of strawberries frozen. We've got about eight kilos of plum. Uh, we've got about four kilos of grapes. So who's gonna go? Who's gonna eat all this then? So the meerkats really like the beans and the porcupines. So we've got frozen beans, and then our lemurs get a tiny, tiny bit of fruit because it is really sweet. Um, and also our goats and things like frozen banana. So we've got about twenty-four kilos of frozen banana. <laughs> it's a it's a good problem to have though, isn't it? Yeah. Who's getting frozen strawberries then? Who's getting strawberries? Lemurs love frozen strawberries. Nice. And what's in these boxes? Anything or nothing? Or are you just moving yeah, them around? Yeah, cod, yes. Yeah. So we've got lots of cod. Yeah. So our arctic foxes like that, raccoons like that. Ross likes it. Yeah, our Scottish <laughs> oh, does he? Just Ross, not Cromarty. Yes, yeah. no. 
She's a lady. <laughs> she doesn't eat fish. But Russ is a man's man. He loves Amazing. His God. Yeah, awesome. We'll have a look in here. Is it tidy in here? Within yeah, reason. It is. Ooh, amazing. So here's some exciting enrichment devices that we use uh, for the wallabies and the tortoises, which is, yes, you are right. It is a clothes hanger. There they go. So uh, I'll show you our diets actually, because like they are insane. Um, so like for example, uh, capybara, we've got 12 capybara every day. They have 3.6 kilos of broccoli, uh, 1.8 kilos of carrot, 1.8 kilos of turnip, um, and cabbage and cauliflower as well, including as well uh, capybara pellet, which is a special diet that they get as well as grass pellet. So they eat a lot of food. Um, but yeah, everyone's on here. Pine cone is a porcupine, uh, just for anyone who doesn't know. I love how all of them are, animal names like animal species except for pinecone that's meant to be a tree porcupine um but yeah this is all the food and stuff that we've had delivered which is just mind-blowing um from morrison's the co-op m s and cramlington uh we've just had mountains of stuff uh which is unbelievable um like you see we've got a frozen crate of what looks like tomatoes yep tomatoes the uh, pigs love that stuff so yeah, <laughs> we're literally running out of freezer space. That's how, that's kind of the point we're getting to now is that like, we're loving all the donations and we don't want to say no. So we're trying our best to get enough space to store stuff uh, long-term so that we don't, you know, it doesn't go off. Um, so like Ashley said, we're freezing loads of stuff um, and we bought two new freezers that are coming next week to help increase our load. So yeah. <laughs> It's a job and a half really, sorting out all the food and stuff, but you know what, it's brilliant. And like, we literally can't thank the suppliers enough for all the food that you've given us. Like, it's mind blowing. And we never thought anyone could be this generous to us, of all people. Hey goats. Here's our goats. Hi, how's it going? Oh, you don't have to get up, it's fine. You're just enjoying the sun, are you? Yeah, hello. This is Geraldine. I'll just take you down to the uh, new enclosure project that we've got um, and show you that. We'll take a beeline. Yeah, we'll go up here. We'll have a little look and see what Claudia is up to. Oh, Claudia and Dan are here. Amazing. Everyone's enjoying the sun. Do you know what it is? These lot, spoilt, you know? Not a care in the world. Hi, what are you guys doing? Oh, right, okay. Fair enough. Where is it? Oh, it's in the back stall, is it? This is Gemini. We've had Gemini for like nine, ten years now. Uh, she's about 22 years old, so she's getting on a bit. So yeah, she's one of our longest served residents here. Right, so. <sighs> Tell you what we need. What we need is, we need a swimming pool. That would be nice. Or Ashley, one of our keepers, keeps telling me to try and have a look out for sea lions. Then we could go in the pool with them, especially on days like this. We go in the capybara pond, but uh, I don't think that's worth it, to be honest. So here we are coming down to the new enclosure. Moving in in September, October. So hopefully everything will be back up and running normal by then properly. Um, builders are coming in soon to uh, put the foundations in for the new house. Yeah, it's quite big. So I'm not quite sure when I'm going to announce what it is yet, um, but we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes, eh? 
Anyways, we need to pick the winner for our um, drawing competition. We had loads of amazing entries. Thank you so much to everyone who entered for the How to Draw Raccoon com competition. Um, it was really difficult for us all to choose. The winner obviously gets a year's family pass, which was obviously valid from the date that we actually opened. So that's for two adults and two kids. Um, so yeah, it's exciting. Thank you so much to everyone who entered. I think we're going to do another kind of drawing competition here pretty soon because it seemed pretty popular. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out which animal to draw next. The one that we've decided to choose to win the How to Draw a Raccoon competition is Sophie, who's age 10. And she did this amazing little family uh, picture of four raccoons all together, which is just so amazing. Um, so well done, Sophie. Thank you so much for entering and do get in touch with us so we can send out your um, family pass. Thank you so much for entering. Thank you everyone for entering. You really put a lot of smiles on our faces. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how we could display all of them in the zoo somewhere because they are super cool. Um, so thank you very much everyone and thank you very much. Well done Sophie. Awesome. The other thing that's worth mentioning is the fact that we've obviously, since I put out that enrichment video last weekend, um, we've had loads of uh, stuff bought for us off of our Amazon wish list, which is just amazing. Thank you so much. Um, so our keepers have kindly put together quite a few clips of all the different animals using different things. Um, just to say thank you so much. And look, here they are. There's the animals enjoying them. Um, we had some super cool bits of enrichment, toys and balls and things that were donated um, that kind of sink to the bottom that the otters really, really enjoyed playing with. Um, Ian Bradley um, donated a really, really cool night vision camera. I haven't had a chance to set it up yet, um, but I can't wait to do that in our mouse lemurs and in our jerboas so we can see what they're up to. Um, and we also got a few like feeding dispensing toys, uh, which is really cool. And we also had a load of poster tubes donated too. So yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. Like the animals have had loads of like new stuff this week. So yeah, brilliant. Um, obviously anyone who would like to have a little look on our Amazon wish list, uh, you can do. I'll put the link in the comments below um, so you can have a little look, see if you fancy getting anything for our bits. And obviously I will uh, do a little video to, to show our appreciation because it does mean a lot. Uh, it's awesome. Thank you so much again to Michelle Thurwell for your donation this week. Um, <laughs> You've been having some tough times, but you went out to Asda yesterday and you got us three bags full of all kinds of goodies. A lot of people think that a day like today is like the perfect day to go to the zoo. Yeah, it's perfect for us because it's really nice to walk around in it, but the animals, man, it's just too hot for them. They're just caked out everywhere, hiding in the shade. Because um, we don't force any of our animals to be out and about. You know, we provide them all with shelters if they want to be sheltered, obviously. Um, and obviously if they want to be away from the public, then they can be. It's, you know, it's up to them. So. So yeah, it's lovely down here. We've got some really exciting projects that's gonna be happening across the river there where the sheep are shouting at us. Um, all of that area is gonna be getting redeveloped here uh, in the next couple of months. Um, so watch the space for what's happening there. Um, it's all about native species, which is even more exciting because it's not just about exotic animals all the time. Native species are also just as important. So, yeah, awesome. Oh, and just for something a little bit more lighthearted, um, Chessington World of Adventures down south um, nominated us here at Northumberland Zoo to do the blinding lights challenge. Uh, so <laughs> keep an eye out on our social media here in the next few days for a ridiculous video of all of us dancing, obviously social distancing. Um, but yeah, we're all trying to dance to that new song. Um, but yeah, it should be fun um, and hopefully you'll enjoy that. So um, yeah, we'll be nominating some other zoos to take part in it as well. But in the meantime, if you guys have any comments or if you want to get in touch with us, then please do so. Um, I will be releasing guidelines for us reopening here pretty soon. Um, like I said, it's probably going to be in about four or five weeks. So uh, watch this space. And uh, yeah, until then, uh, hope you enjoyed that little walk round and we'll, uh, we'll see you soon. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Bye.